Hi everyone and welcome to Homebrew Buffoonery, Technology Edition. So today uh, what I'm going to do is have a quick look at the evolution of my mash setup. Um, what I've got here is my cheapy stock pot with a ball valve on the end and um, I've been online and I've bought some hardware um, to try and make it so that I can use a pump. Okay so here is the uh, hardware setup of my mash tun at the minute this is my original valve uh, ball valve and this is the original hose attachment that went in the air uh, went in the end there and then this is my pump and it's got two male half inch threads on it and what i've bought uh, what's just come today is this new ball valve here which is you know virtually identical to that one and then I've got some, the cam lock uh, connections are as follows. So what's going to happen is this is uh, the female uh, connector. And as you can see inside, it's got a white silicon seal. Um, stainless steel, pretty solid. And that is a B type connector, it says just there. And so it's got a male thread on it. And that will screw very nicely into there thank you very much and i'll use uh, some yellow ptfe on it um, which is the gas rated ptfe and it'll just help with the seal and so the second part then is this is the male connector and this connector is the type a it says there and it's got a female thread on the inside and so the female thread fits on the pump like so and you can also get, this is the, exactly the same type of connector, the two male connectors, but the thread on this one is male. So you can get uh, both types, a female thread and a male thread. Um, but for that one, I need female thread. And you can also get the female threaded version of this one. And the final one that I've got is the male connector with the hose clip, the hose attachment on it. So my plan is to have this connector in there for now anyway this is what my plan is to have that connector on there uh, i'm going to screw the ball valve directly onto the end of the pump and then we'll leave the hose connector in there and run the silicon hose from there but there is an issue with this which is pretty obvious So let's see if we can figure out what the issue is. All right, it's really quite obvious. Um, if I, especially if I attach the ball valve, to the pump, okay, uh, is this becoming more obvious? Hey up cat and if I just pull the two handles down there oh, there is the slight problem that I've got that this distance here is about 25 centimeters and that's a lot of stuff to be hanging on that one bit there so I might, I might try one brew with it just to see how it goes because I want to see the pump working um, and when I do do the brew, what I'll do is I'll open that valve fully and then use th this valve here to regulate the flow from the pump. Because we, what we need is this pump to be full of liquid all the time. Otherwise, it doesn't like it and catastrophe, apparently. Um, so for the next step, what I need to do is figure out how I want to use my hoses because I don't like this connecting to that that's too much weight so what I need is some a length of hose between these two connections and which means I'm gonna to have to find one of these to fit on there so I need the connect female connector with the female thread on it and then I can add these connectors into the end of the hose and so it fit in there 
a connector in there and with a female connector fit in there so I'd have hose between the two I'm not sure how long it needs to be and um, I'm not sure how I'm going to support it but that's what it needs to be and then the pump on this end uh, I'm thinking of getting the connector the similar this kind of connector to go in the end there and then another one of these goes in the hose so at least then I can have that as one piece that as a piece separate on its own and then just a little bit of tubing um, as and when required so that's where I'm up to with the uh, evolution of my mash setup um, hopefully the next step is once the hoses will get the hoses fitted and I'll do a run through of the setup then because I'll, I'll order those extra parts tomorrow and they should be moved by early next week and um, I'll just give you an idea of what my ultimate setup is so my ultimate setup is I saw this on a YouTube video and it was a guy with two sort of 80 90 litre pots and what he had was uh, Imagine this 80 or 90 litres, so this is 12 litres, imagine 80 or 90 litres of this. And he had a ball valve, he had two of them, he had a ball valve in the bottom of each, and he also had a connection in the top. Um, and then he would run, whilst he was doing his mash, he would recirculate, so he'd run a, a hose from this connector back to the top of his mash tongue connector, and it would just recirculate as it normally would. Then in his second vessel he would have his sparge water and after he'd mashed for a while um, I don't know how long he did it for maybe half an hour 45 minutes um, or maybe even the full hour he would then stop the pump uh, he did have two pumps by the way he would then stop the pump and he would have the outlet from this mash tun with the grain in going into the outlet the inlet of the sparge water vessel shut up cap and then he would have the outlet from the sparge water vessel going to the inlet of the mash tun. And so we'd have a figure of eight infinite loop. Um, it needs two pumps, it needs a lot of tubing, and it needs a lot of these connectors. So you can expect me to have a go at that. That's what my final, my final evolution is. And you can expect me to have a go at that. And whilst I'm trying to figure it out, make a complete and utter ash of it because I'm really good at it. Uh, but that's basically the setup. Um, I'll just, whilst we're at it, I'll um, give you a quick view of what's actually brewing in that there brewery because we need to see some, at least some beer or some alcoholic drink in any video, don't we? So is uh, under the stairs or that there brewery as I like to call it. Uh, that's me ironing board here, so don't worry about that. Um, but what I have going is uh, six different things on at the minute. So what I have here, uh, if you remember the video on the Beaverdale wine kits, I've got two gallons of Sauvignon Blanc, which is going to be ready on the 11th of September. Today is the 6th. So I'm going to do a, a gravity test on those uh, next Tuesday. And I've got another batch of my cider. And my two minute cider apples away that's gonna have a look at that on sunday oh triathlon day oh dear um then i have got that's my odinson stout from the previous video and then sneakily behind it uh this is my belgian pale ale which i'm brewing for my birthday in a couple of weeks i'm gonna go around to a mate's house close by and he's gonna drink it all whilst i watch him um <laughs> Uh, but that is the the beer from the uh, lost video so it does actually exist and then just here this bucket here it's actually tonight is the night that uh, it gets bottled so uh, it should be really really clear and I've got some bottles down there and uh, some bottles at the back there and all sorts I also have some sort of general equipment as my boil bags and my big funnel and auto siphon and then just a box full of grain there um, another box here of tubes and I've got a heating belt in there yeah, nonsense 
couple of spare demi johns for transfer the beer over i'm going to transfer this beer over here both beers into the secondary for one day to clear them out um just a little bit better because i'm looking for a really a clear beer i've got tons of bottles at the back there and i've got some bottles down the side and then what i've got in here i've got some oh bottles of beer uh whirlpool and something else that's conditioning away nicely so you know you can as you can tell from the video it's uh, quite dark um the temperature stays pretty stable here this this is an outside wall and it's starting to cool down now because it's beginning of september um so the temperature in here tends to stick around from sort of 16 or 18 degrees really so when the fermentations get going and they're producing their own heat, it gets us up to 20, just spot on. Uh, in the winter, I'll uh, use the heating belt. But, you know, a couple of beers, a couple of wines, a bit of, bit of the old cider, another wine to uh, bottle tonight, which I forgot to do, so I'll do that later. A couple of spare jemmy jars, more bottles, stuff. And uh, it's all pretty neat and compact and keeps the boss happy. So just as a little extra to the uh, technology edition, uh, here's me uh, way of bottling me uh, Pinot Grigio. Uh, so what I've got is me bottles there. They've got some uh, PWB or PBW. It's like a bleachy kind of solution mixed with some water, teaspoon to a gallon or two gallons or something like that. Um, ideally, we'd use star sand and a little squirt spray gun. So that's another evolution for the cleaning. And I've got my auto siphon there. I've got my bucket with the Pinot in, and that's looking nice and clear. And then I've got on the floor here, I've got a, a little bowl that I'm going, I'm going to rinse all these bottles out. I've got a little bowl on the floor, and I'm going to put all the bottles in to the bowl. And then uh, I'll auto siphon with my bottling wand and fill them up with minimal uh, drips and minimal spillage on the floor. Uh, and therefore not upsetting the boss, although tonight it wouldn't matter because she's about 300 miles away watching Barry Manilow again. Okay, so we're ready to go with the bottling now and there is the uh, Pinot. You can see there, oh, there-ish. How lovely and clear that is. Lovely jubbly. And then down here on the floor, I've got my bottles and what I'm going to do is set her off with the old bottling one, which is there, pop her into the first bottle, press it down, a couple of pumps, and away we go. You can see how lovely and clear that is already. Beautiful. And so we fill it until it gets right to the very top because the bottling wand takes up some of the space. So I take the bottling wand out and it just comes to the neck there. So I've only managed to get five bottles out of that. So I'm obviously not doing it right. Uh, I need to put more water in and get uh, a little bit more. I should have an extra bottle in there. But I hope you can see that the simplicity of the wine kit does give you really really crystal clear wine absolutely crystal clear you can even see me marinating peppers in its bottle behind so that's the Pinot Grigio wine kit from Beaverdale um, available at all good home brew stores I suspect in the UK and um, that'll now go under stairs into its uh, conditioning room or box so it'll be dark and cool uh, hopefully for at least a month before the boss gets hold of it so uh, there you go for another edition of homebrew buffoonery you can see i'm really really good at being a homebrew buffoon but in the end results do show and uh, it's a great hobby to get into remember to uh, like subscribe uh, and all that stuff and uh, Go out and try and improve your mash setup.